Hi there and welcome. Today I'm just taking a look at this uh, Lambda 8300 and the Power 3000 that I uh, got uh, with my computer haul the other day. And um, I think I'm just going to plug them in first to see whether they're working and, and if not uh, I'm going to attempt the repair. Okay. It didn't work there. Ah, there we go. So, uh, the first time I plugged it in, nothing happened. The second time it beeped. And the keyboard is working, I think. Yep. So this machine is working. And I think I might just have to uh, swap out the electrolytic capacitor because the reset was a little bit, it seems, uh, not too good. So before the capacitor leaks, I, I better swap it out. So that has to be done on this machine. And it also has to be cleaned up a little bit. There's a lot of dirt on it. Um, yeah, so that's it. Uh, let's swap it out for the other one. And the lambda here, it looks like it has a lot of scratches and has been uh, used uh, a lot. But um, I think it's not a scratch, I think it's dirt. Because um, when you scratch white plastic, it leaves a white groove and uh, not a black groove and I think this is a uh, solid plastic all the way through uh, it's not black plastic that has been spray painted white so uh, I'm gonna try and clean that off for sure uh, but let's try and plug it in and see what happens okay it beeped and there's screen input ah the keyboard is not working the reset button and the zero is working. The enter button is working. And the space bar is working. Ah. So a few of the keys on the right side of the keyboard seems to be okay. Uh, but the rest is not working. So yeah, we have to fix the keyboard on this one and uh, clean it up. So let's start by repairing this one. And uh, basically as we saw it's working, but it just needs a... Uh, just needs uh, a new capacitor for the reset circuit. The reset circuit in this machine is just an RC. Uh, it's a capacitor to ground and a resistor to 5 volts. And uh, when you first switch on the machine... Oops. The capacitor will charge up slowly, uh, slower than the power supply, so it will hold an input pin low during the, the during the, the period when it powers up. So uh, let's see whether we can find an RC circuit in here. Something interesting about this machine is that there seems to have been a lot of fixes done, a lot of modifications, uh, and that wasn't on my other machine. For example here, there's a capacitor parallel to a resistor. Uh, this diode has been um, changed at some point. Uh, there's another modification down here, uh, but I think that is for the cassette tape. To this one. Okay, and... Uh, there. And we have a resistor here, and we have a capacitor next to it. Okay, so I found it. Um, the resistor is here, the capacitor is here, and this is a very tiny capacitor. Okay, so uh, I've zoomed in, and we have the capacitor here, and the resistor here. And uh, the resistor is uh, 220 kilo ohm, which is quite high. And the capacitor is uh, 0.1. I think there's no uh, text on it, but all the other capacitors are 0.1 micro. And uh, there are two things here. First of all, uh, if this capacitor is getting a little bit old and tired, the internal resistance will be quite high. And uh, we should, I think, change this 220k resistor to something smaller because uh, this is really at the edge. Uh, another thing is, I don't know if you can see it, there are some solder blobs on the PCB here. And uh, I'm not sure that has got something to do with it, but it does definitely doesn't look good. But there we go. See this all this big blob here. So yeah, uh, that could have something to do with it. But uh, yeah, anyway, 
I'm going to uh, change this resistor and uh, this capacitor and uh, then we'll see what we end up with. From experience I have to switch off the camera while I'm soldering because uh, it is, it, it is, it's too difficult with the camera. Okay, so finally I just want to check the electrolytic capacitors to so make sure they're good. And they are after all uh, quite old and I don't want them to leak. So uh, we'll just test them. This is uh, 52, 52 microfarads and uh, 1 ohm ESR and uh, that's excellent. It's actually a 47 microfarad capacitor. So no problems there. And uh, down here we have another one. A few pig of ferrets, that's not right. Oh, that's not good. We need to swap that one. And I have another one here, which is, should be 100 microfarad. Okay, that's good then. So I need to swap one, and uh, that's fine. Uh, and then the rest are okay. Oh, Wow, soldering that one in took a really long time. Whew. So uh, I'm not going to do that again in the near future. That was not good. But uh, finally, it have, uh, finally I succeeded. So let's just put it back together and never open it again. So, that's it. And the warranty sticker needs a bit of glue. Uh, so, let's try it out. Uh, plug it in and it should reset. Yes, it does. Let's we have the little cursor down there and that works. Let's do it again. That works. Again. 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 And again. Yeah, so uh, consider it fixed. So this one had a keyboard problem and I think uh, the first thing I'm going to do is just remove everything from the from the plastic enclosure uh, because I need to clean up the plastic enclosure anyway. And uh, yeah, it looks great inside. Uh, some of the capacitors are a bit wonky, some of the components looks like they've been thrown in with a shovel, but uh, it's pretty decent, I think. Um, I can't see anything wrong with the keyboard connector. So it could be the keyboard itself or some of those diodes that have burned, but uh, I, I, I wouldn't know why would the diodes burn. So uh, yeah, let's remove the keyboard. Can I get it out? There we go, and uh, okay. Okay, so uh, we got it out from the enclosure, and uh, that's definitely a plus. We can wash the enclosure separately now. Um, yeah, I guess we just Okay, so we see the construction of the keyboard. It's actually a, a rubber keyboard with conductive ink on each of these dots here. And uh, that's the same construction as the Jupiter Ace. 
and of course they will be short circuiting these pads down here so um I mean if we look at the PCB I'm not sure you can see it but if the light falls in the right uh, angle we can see that the board looks dirty uh, the fingers here doesn't look too good and uh, I mean that is predictable if this machine has been sitting in a garage for a lot of time uh, for a long time then um, we might have some corrosion because uh, this is not uh, gold plated I think has a bit of a golden shine to it but I don't think it's gold plated so anyway um, let's just switch it on and uh, try and short those pads with something conductive yes and that works yes so uh, at least the electronics the keyboard decoder and the diodes down here on the PCB is working and there is something uh, mechanical so these these skull fingers or whatever we should call them these fingers are okay um, it could also be that those black conductive dots here are not working so let's measure how many ohms each of these are okay so let's just probe these are conductive ink pads here 20 ohm so they are working 300 ohm 200 ohm 300 ohms 270 so that's pretty good actually uh, so it looks like it's just mark some uh, oxidation or whatever got some IPA here no it doesn't look dirty but uh, let's just clean the whole thing I can see something happens when IBA goes on to the pads, but uh, like some layer coming off. So I think we are on the right track here, but the cotton bud doesn't get dirty. Okay, so I think that's it. Uh, let's put the rubber pad on top and see if that worked out. Ah, and it works. Perfect. Okay, I'm back and uh, I set up my uh, extractor, it has uh, active carbon. Okay, I'm gonna, and I swapped to the black one, and uh, the other one went really well. The black one is a little bit uh, weird because once the IPA dries, uh, it leaves some kind of a grey, dullish layer. So I guess either I'm dissolving the black plastic, which I don't think I am, or there's just so much dirt on it. But anyway, I will leave you here. Uh, I got two new working machines. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you again later.